Hi everyone, I am Sabs and I'm an Android Developer Relations Engineer at Google. Sometimes you want to make it easy for users to get to a specific place within your app. For example, you want to show a subscription offer or ask a user to update their profile or jump to the user's cart in a shopping application. You can use deep links to do this. But what are deep links? Well, deep links are a way to jump into the middle of your app's navigation, whether that's from an actual URL link or a pending intent from notification. You can share these links outside your application, like in emails, messages, QR codes, social media, and inside, shortcuts, notifications, or between models in your app. The user can click from anywhere and the links can be displayed to get to that place within your app. In this video, we will take a closer look at different types of deep links. We will go over how to set them up, test them, and share deep link navigation best practices. For a short intro about deep links, check out part one, what can you do with deep links? To quickly recap from part one, there are different types of links you can create in your Android app. Deep links, web links, and Android app links. Deep links are URIs with any scheme that takes users directly to a specific place within your app. Web links are deep links that use the HTTP and HTTPS schemes. Android app links are web links that are verified to belong to your app only. When a user clicks a link, a programmatic request invokes a URI intent and the Android system tries to find a handler application that can resolve that link. To make sure that your app can be handler, you need to do the three following steps. Add intent filters for incoming links, read data from incoming intents, and test your deep links. Let's explore step one. For this step, you need to add intent filters to your manifest file to drive users to the right place in your app. As shown in the following code snippet, in this example, we added an intent filter that navigates users to my map activity. Let's explore elements and attribute values of this intent filter. I specify action view so that the intent filter can be reached from Google search. Include the default category. This allows your app to respond to implicit intent. Without this, the activity can be started only if the intent specifies your app component name. Include the browsable category. It is required in order for the intent filter to be accessible from a web browser. Without it, clicking a link in a browser cannot resolve to your app. Add the data tag that represents the URI format that resolves to the activity. Once the Android system starts your activity through an intent filter, you can use data provided by the intent to determine any specifics about what needs to be shown. This snippet shows how to retrieve data from an intent using the data and action methods. To test that a deep link results to the correct app activity, you can use the Android debug bridge command. The general syntax for testing an intent filter URI with ADB is the following. Note that the package name can be skipped from implicit intents, but should be provided for explicit intents. Let's look at this example. The command below tries to view an app with the com.example.droidfoot package associated with the example droidfoot URI. The manifest declaration and intent handler you said above define the connection between your app and a deep link. Now let's explore web links. Web links are deep links that use the HTTP and HTTPS schemes. They are implemented in the same way except with the scheme of HTTP or HTTPS in your intent filter. To validate yourself as the owner of a web link, you will set up an Android app link. Android app links are validated by the host domain of the link. In our example, we had an app that owns the droidfood.example.com domain and has a corresponding web page. When a user clicks on the validated Android app link, the app opens immediately if it's installed. If the app is not installed and the user didn't set another app to be the default handler, then the link will be open in a browser. If the Android app link doesn't pass the additional validation, it will be open in a browser. In Android version less than 12, the disambiguation dialog will appear. To set up Android app links, you need a few extra steps beyond what you do for web links. Add auto-verified attribute to intent filters and declare the association between your app and website. Let's explore step four. To enable Android app link handling verification for your app, add intent filters that match the following format. 
Make sure you explicitly set Android Auto Verify to true, provide HTTPS and HTTP schemes and a host. In step five, declare the association between your website and your intent filters by hosting a digital asset links JSON file at the following location. A digital asset links JSON file must be published on your website to indicate the Android apps that are associated with the website and verify the app's URL intents. The following asset list.json file grants link opening rights to an Android app with the package droidfood.example.com. The certificate fingerprint must match the release signature used to sign your app. If you're using Play App Signing, make sure you're using the fingerprints from the signature that Google uses to sign each of your releases, which can be found in the Google Play Console. You can add debug signature fingerprint as well for testing. The signature fingerprint should be in uppercase. After you have confirmed the list of websites to associate with your app and you have confirmed that the hosted JSON file is valid, install the app on your device. Wait at least 20 seconds for the asynchronous verification process to complete. Use the following command to check whether the system verified your app and set the correct link handling policies. Once you set up your deep links, follow these best practices to improve users' experience. The deep link should take users directly to the content without any prompts, inter-serial pages, or logins. Make sure that users can see the app content even if they never previously opened the application. If you need to prompt a user with a login screen or onboarding flow, consider if you can delay the prompt until a future interaction when the user opens the app without a deep link. Finally, your app should my users' expectations for backward navigation after they enter your app through a deep link. Please check out the design guidance described in the navigation with back and up link in the description below. In this video, you'll learn how to implement different types of deep links. For more details, check out the understanding the different types of links guide in the Android developers documentation link in the video description below. If something doesn't work, watch our addressing pain points and common mistakes video. To see other content about deep links, check out the deep links video series crash course playlist in the Android developers channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching.